Army slashing thousands of jobs in major revamp to prepare for future wars. Now, mind you, this is in Stars and Stripes, which when Pop and I were in, this was like the Daily Herald. Every Army guy read Stars and Stripes probably at least once a week, it was, it even was if it was Bible. just for the comics. Yeah, it was military but, Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Uh, the U.S. Army is slashing the size of its force by about 24,000 or almost 5% restructuring. You'd be better able to fight the next major war. Blah, blah, blah. So, Sorry. <laughs> the hell was that? The hell was that? Yeah. Liar. Not you. Liar! The cuts will mainly be in already empty posts, not actual soldiers, including in jobs related to counterinsurgency that swelled during the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, but are not much as much needed today. Listen carefully to some of the stuff that's being taken down here. About 3,000 of the cuts will come from Army Special Operations Forces. That doesn't sound like a lot when you've got an army of 494,000 until you realize that there's how many operators pop? Maybe 12,000? A very few. In, in if you combine the Green Berets the D-Boys, Ranger, um, and the one or two other units that are out there, SOAR, 160 SOAR, and uh, one or two other, maybe about 12,000 guys. That's including their support elements, I think. Uh, so, yeah, you would be correct. Um, well, first of all, if you think it's you can just flip a switch and build those kind of units on a moment's notice, you're out of your goddamn mind takes years it takes it years takes, it takes years and years and years guys there's a green beret team i don't know if they're still around but they were when i was young called triple nickel it's oda555 you ever heard of those guys pop no did you go through mccall to yeah. the schoolhouse at mccall the, there was a photo inside the east door next to Randy Shugart's Medal of Honor, and it was of a couple of guys standing over a particular body in a particular jungle in South America that indicated strongly that the Bolivian police were very late to the party. Ah. And that was Triple Nickel. And they were still around in the late 90s, early 2000s when I got to elements that were supporting uh, Green Beret operations. So what Pop's saying about these units take years to build, some of these things have been around for 40 years, and they're real picky about how they select their guys. <laughs> like oh my god, they're top tier elements. Yeah, they're they're just top tier elements, and they know what they need. So to take these apart is is very very bad for us. Yeah, and first of all, um, we all know that the army missed its recruiting goal by 25k. Yes, and it just seems to be very bizarre that they're cutting back the force now by 25 K. Yes. Perhaps is somebody up there in the Pentagon doesn't want to be embarrassed this year when the recruiting numbers come out. So they're lowering the numbers. We're getting to that. I've yep. got that covered. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we'll get to we that. are getting to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. But my thing is this. Hey. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. One of the main reasons people used to enlist is patriotism. They love the country. Yes. We have had decades of men being criminalized, turned into slaves, you know, their children taken away. They've broken our will in regard in that regard. On yeah. top of that, we literally just watched the military crucify a bunch of people who didn't want to take an experimental vaccine. You're literally treating a volunteer force like guinea pigs. Yeah. And one of the things that you touch on the most, I'm sorry to jump in on you here, but one of the things you touch on the most is the way men get mauled in family court. Mm -hmm. It is not twice as bad in the military. You get it twice. Yep. Because your command will screw you over 16 days from Sunday. And then you get it in family court as well. You can even add a third aspect to that because the command's going to turn around and back the family courts. So Correct. they hit you three ways from Sunday. So why join? Yeah. I mean, and I literally, you get out of high school and you go work at McDonald's, you're going to make more money than a soldier. And you're not going to have to risk your life, have people yelling at you, and eat shitty food, live in the field, none of that stuff. You just go to work and come home. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I did see uh, I did see one tweet from someone uh, the other day. It was actually a really good fucking valid point. The military will not put the funding towards for left-handed rifles because they don't want to, uh, you know, p- uh, p- p- pity to that to that minority. Mm-hmm. If I'm using the right words, you don't really need that. That's fine. But but you know, yeah, you know, I shoot with either hand just fine with yes. a standard military weapon. Yeah, but they're they're not willing to do the research for all that and the training for the left-handed weapons, but yet they're willing to do all of this uh, trunification yep. kind of thing. Correct. Now yep. who? Now I'm I'm just asking you gentlemen this and you guys in the chat, which is a bigger minority? People that are left-handed or the true population? I would say. Let me know. Yeah, in the chat, let us know. But my thing is this, though, man. <clears throat> We've already heard the scuttlebutt that they're doing stop loss in the Navy and I believe in the Air Force. Yeah. We've heard the scuttlebutt. I've read a couple articles that they're trying to call back retired servicemen. Now, if there is a major war breaking out, I'm going to tell you all right now the draft is coming back, and you can whine and you can cry all you want. But it's coming back, and they will fucking come and get you. And you can say, oh, no, no, I'll never happen. Yes, it will. And going in the military when you're drafted is really bad. You can't run into Canada anymore either. Nope. There's no more running to Canada. Nope. No, because they will literally throw your ass in jail for mean tweets. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, yep. I mean, absolutely, absolutely correct. So back to this this downsizing that's going on here. Uh, we just pointed out that 3,000 taken out of the special operations community. This is a huge, massive chunk. Um, at the same time, however, the plan will add about 7,500 troops and other critical missions, critical missions, including air defense and counter drone units and five new task forces with si- enhanced cyber intelligence and long-range strike capabilities enter the call of duty crowd. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the thing. Army Secretary Christine Warmuth said that she and General Randy George, the Army Chief of Staff, worked to thin out the number of places where they had empty or excess slots. Now, Pop and I have seen drawdowns before. The first thing they do is guys that are close to retirement, they'll nudge you out. They will nudge those guys out of there, and there's nobody to replace them. We're already at a point. My last private. He retired in 2017. He was the last one to get NCOs who were raised as NCOs. Mm -hmm. He was unable to, when he retired, he was an E7. He was unable to pass that knowledge on because it had become forbidden knowledge. You couldn't smoke a guy anymore. You couldn't give him corrective training. You couldn't keep all the paperwork out of his file so that he's not fucked because he had a stupid moment. When he was in E2. Yep. That's all gone. All of that knowledge, all of those old NCOs are, are gone. And you see it in the movies where they they'll beat you up and smack you around and all that stuff. But it had a purpose. That yeah, stuff just, had a real serious purpose. Yeah, they didn't like kick the shit out of you because they're sadists. They kicked the shit yeah. out of you because they don't want to see you in a goddamn body bag. Yes, exactly correct. Uh, that's what my drill sergeants told yep. me. And they were smoking the shit out of me when I was a fucking dumbass. Yep. So. Yeah, that is that is absolutely correct. This Stars and Stripes article keeps rewinding itself to the well, top. Here's the way. Stars and Stripes thing. Now, I'm going to tell you this about Stars and Stripes, Military Times, because mm-hmm. Military Times says Army, Navy, Marine Corps Times, whole deal. All right. Now, you guys know, yeah, I do comedy to stop suicide. I can't even buy advertising on Stars and Stripes or or Army or Military Times because I'm too politically incorrect. Mm -hmm. So the powers that be would rather serve you up to death than deal with a crass old sergeant who says swear words from time to time. Just let that sink in right there. Yeah, That that is absolutely correct. I remember when we first started getting this started, I looked into trying to get you some advertisement at Stars and Stripes, and even back then, before you became controversial, they didn't want anything to do with a guy who was talking about 
family courts and military suicide. Correct. They wanted nothing at all to do with that. Our local TV stations here in Detroit, Pop's finally getting a little bit of traction there. We gotta we gotta get on that, by the way. Yep. Um they wouldn't take Purple Heart's final beat because it was too gruesome and truthful. Meanwhile, on the same channels, you've got cop gun battles where people are getting smoked left, right, and center. You got mm-hmm. people screwing left, right, and center, cheating on each other, having gay sex on TV. All this other stuff, but the true story of what it's like to be a soldier going through this stuff is too intense. Correct. What kind of lopsided well, choice words here? <laughs> the youth have been weakened to fecklessness. Yes. On my list. <laughs> yes, that is but, correct. Um, <clears throat> the, there was a, a comedian who passed away not too long ago. Uh, big old fat bastard. You guys probably know him in the chats, and you you guys know him, Ralphie May. Mm-hmm. Oh, that yeah. guy that guy would be canceled immediately today. But you know what? He one thing that he always that, that one of his statements that he says, "I'm not politi- pol- politically correct. I'm correct." And I th- yes. believe that's what we are. I mean, we we're, we're not going to pull yeah. punches. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. We're going to hurt your feelings. We're going to hurt your feces. Yeah. Yeah, well, but we're telling you, we're truth. telling you guys, we're telling you guys the truth. And if the truth uh, kills you, well, so be it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember actual. Uh, you were talking about the top tier units. I don't even remember how many active duty SF groups there are anymore. Is there like one, five? one, three, five, seven? I think that's it. Ten. ten. So it's five. Yeah, I don't know what AO uh, 10th had. One was Asia. I think... All of that scrambled. We was South America. They switched all that up? Yeah, it's, it's all... 7th used to have uh, South America. 7th used to have South America. They were out of Doral. They were out of Panama and then Doral. Yeah. Um, first is still out of Oki in Seattle. They still have Asia. Okay. I, that that one I know, but I don't know about three, five, seven, and ten. But my, my thing is this is you know, uh CAG, Combat Action Group, otherwise known as Delta, they have their number they use is squadron. Uh Same I don't really know, even if I knew their exact numbers, I could I wouldn't say it here. Nobody I don't think I don't they know their exact numbers, to be completely honest. I'm just saying that with what's going on, the pipeline to replenish those guys is rapidly going away because those guys come from the regiment and the 82nd airborne division, you know, for the most part, Mm -hmm. if you're weakening the basic bottom rung of the military, the top rung is, is short, shortly behind it. And that's actually two guys from two guys from my MOS 98 golf, uh, made it into the program. I don't know if they finished or not, but I know two guys made it past the selection. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I first got started, it's one staff yeah. sergeant's husband and then another guy. Were they support um, or were they direct action? Because they, they were they were direct action. Okay. They went they went for Delta selection. We yeah. had a lot of guys go through the support selection. Yeah, yeah. We had a lot of guys go to the support selection. Yeah. And that's my only regret is I never actually did the Delta selection because I wanted yeah. to get married and have a family. And that worked out so great. <laughs> you could have been the next Eric Haney. Yeah. All right. <laughs> anyway. So we are being we- set up for a huge fall. Yeah. Yes, we are. Let's, let's move on with this because uh, this is not good. So the army secretary is talking about force structures, cuts, reforms to soft, uh, preparing to axe a bunch of units and restructure others. This is never good when these people do this. Again, Army Secretary Christine Warwick, who also attributed some of the moves to the recruiting challenges that we've been experiencing. If we don't return our, if we don't turn our recruiting situation around, we will likely have to contemplate additional force structure changes because we can't have unready forces. We can't have hollow formations. Well, Army Secretary Christine Warwick, who looks lovely in that blue dress there. I'm sure she's done all kinds of military time with Correct. those enormous cow cankles. What the hell is going on there? 
She has no military experience at all. I pulled her record. Yeah. I, I pulled her record. Let's let's throw her up there for a second so we can see who we're dealing with here. Honorable Christine Wormuth was informed by the U.S. Senate appointed as the 25th Secretary of the Army. She was the Director of International Defense and Security Center at RAND Corporation, which is a civilian think tank. Yeah. Prior to RAND, she served in several several roles during the Obama administration. From December until August of 2012, she was a special assistant to the president and senior director for defense and national security council. Uh, good. Oh, good. She was near national security council. That's great. Uh, Warmoth then served as deputy under uh, undersecretary for defense for strategy plans and forces. She's got a bachelor of arts in political science and fine art from William College and a master in public policy. All right, first of all, those two. Go ahead. This is making me sick. You literally have a secretary of the army that has never been in the army. She hasn't even studied any of it. It's so what she's, she's, luster she's, fuck. she's not a secretary. She's a suck you, Terry, because we all know how she got up to the top. And listen, this, this is a diversity hire that literally yeah. influences the defense force of this fucking nation. And she has no goddamn experience at uh, all. At Holy all. Shit. I sat in on meetings. I've read the briefings. I know what I'm doing. Nah. Oh, You're she, about as she, useful she, as a screen door on a submarine. She sat on some. She she sat in on something there. Uh, you know, I'm for sure. sure. I'm sure she did. I'm, I'm sure she did multiple times. Look, this is throughout the entire military. We're seeing this new kind of leadership um where they don't they've got a, deg a degree in political science do you know what a degree in political science is it's nothing it's useless it is a completely and utterly useless degree where you talk about politics in class and then the teacher gives you an a unless you want to be a commissar in a communist nation that's true unless you want to be a commissar in a communist nation in which case yeah. you learn how to be a good bolshevik and then a master's of public policy, which is just another Bolshevik, Bolshevik degree. Mm -hmm. She's a political commissar. Correct. She's and no idea. This is a diversity hire. I mean, that's all we have to say. She's a diversity yeah. hire, and she's at the very top, near the top of the pyramid, making all kinds of decisions about a fighting force that she's never served in and knows nothing about. It's like no blind idea. leading. The blind. Yeah. Yeah. All it's, right. It's, it's bad. It's it's like a blind hooker trying to lead a blind oil derrick crew. Um, something's going to blow. Here are the winners and losers in U.S. Army's force structure change. Army has unveiled a white paper. We'll get to that in a moment. Detailing how the service plans to shrink the force in some places and grow it in other areas pop i'm going to set you up here you've seen your share of army documents right correct wait until i show you this white paper let's get through this first here force structure changes are also necessary she said because the army is working through a massive modernization effort involving a wide variety of new capabilities coming online now and over the next two decades what we've done through force structure changes is make room for some of the new formations now, notice all the buzzwords here. There's nothing about what we're going to do with combat units. There's nothing about what we're going to do with armor units. There's nothing we're going to do with aviation units. Force structure, new formations, new spaces. What, are, what other one here? New capabilities. At the same time, the service recruiting challenges have left it with a hollow force structure. Hollow force structure. This is what bureaucrats do. They speak in empty words that have no meaning and can mean whatever they want later on when they need them to mean something. Are you talking about always, weird weasel words? No. Yes, really? these are weasel words. Yeah. That, is, that is correct. Current authorized force structure is 445,000. The service was designed for 494,000. That was at peak right after 9-11. Okay. Prior to that, our force levels, if I am not mistaken, were down around 310. Well, I, I could listen right after the first Gulf War ended. I had just signed a reenlistment contract for active duty special forces. 
and the, the downsizing order was so powerful. They literally called me in and asked me if it was okay to make the, uh, to rip that contract up and sign another one for, you know, uh, special forces, army reserve for 11th for 12th out of uh, Selfridge Air National Guard base. And I took the deal because, you know, Hey, I was, I wanted to go to college anyway, down the road. So, sure. but yeah, I mean, when they decide to pull the carpet on the force, yeah, they don't fuck they around. World War Two at the end of World War Two, I think it actually cut the military in half. Yes. Um, and you end up with stuff like you had in Korea with Task Force Smith. That's an entirely different story. I'll tell that one one of these days. Mm -hmm. uh, Army Secretary Warworth told Defense News in an interview last fall that the Army was preparing to go to Capitol Hill to address some vital changes. All of this empty, vague language. That would include both reductions from the counterinsurgency-related structure and high-tech additions to the force's inventory. Okay. What's in? Let's let's go to what, what are they keeping here? Some major elements of the new force structure will include building out the Army's five theater-level multi-domain task forces. What the ass balls is that? I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, that sounds like a complicated bunch of wordsmith, meaning they're going to stand up a new brigade. It used to be when you got assigned to a task force, it had a purpose, a name, and a mission name. Correct. Or a number. But this word salad here, I don't know, the Army's already established three MDTFs, two in Indo-Pacific theater and one in European theater. It looks like they're changing up the model a little bit. Uh, the service plans to set up another dedicated in the Pacific region, and yet another that is service retained to likely focus on Central Command's area of operations. Um, God, this is just such word salad. The yeah, MBTFs will consist of a headquarters and a headquarters battalion. Multi-domain. Hey, hold on a minute. Yeah, go, go, go. Right. We've got a structure here. But Do go. not read the word salad words. Nobody out there gives a shit about the word salad words. We're going to gruntify it. They are. I'm, I'm brain doggling over here, but yeah. They are literally using weasel words to tell you that they're fucking up by the numbers. They want to actually move people to positions that are more automated, i.e. drones and what have you. And they want to take you know, manpower away from you know the special operations community. Now, Steve and I both know... <clears throat> When a conflict is going to kick off, special forces is usually there first. Already there, yeah. Case in point, we have SOF groups training Taiwan national soldiers. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That may be the that we made that public. Now here's the thing: I saw that and I put it up online, and a lot of people, oh, China's not going to do anything. You've missed the point. For us to put special forces soldiers in a country, given our history, the way we did things in Africa, South America, and a whole bunch of other countries, when we put troops, SF troops, oh, Ukraine too, into a country, it means we're training them to do something. And everybody knows this. The whole world knows this. Yeah, so we've got SOF troops. We've got Green Berets in Taiwan. What message does that send? The problem here is the message that we're sending to the rest of the world. Yep, you are correct. And uh, I used to be we, one of those guys. They yeah, train other troops. So. Yeah, <laughs> the mission that they're on is a FID mission, which means Foreign Internal Defense. Yeah, that, that is. Uh, there's what? Uh, there's direct action. There's FID. There's four other ones I just can't remember. Off the top. I can't remember the names of them anymore, but I supported the ones that were basically uh, in-depth reconnaissance where they would, it was the information gathering process before they actually sent in the direct action guys. What was that one called? I forget. That was, uh, I don't remember. We just went and did it really. Hey, you guys, uh, get that team together and this team together. Give me Alpha from two, and uh, you guys pack your shit. We're going. That That's was what yeah. the mission was called. Hmm. I don't. <laughs> All right, what's but the yeah? Name? It was the it was the intel support uh, gathering before the direct action guys would go in. Watch Grunt Speak live every Tuesday and Thursday at eight PM Eastern.
And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the meat gazer box.